The president today delivered a strong, measured address to the United Nations General Assembly that trod carefully on the intransigency on both sides of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. In the 47-minute speech, the president declared that Palestinians must first make peace with Israel before statehood is a possibility, and reiterated his position that the U.S. will oppose the effort by the Palestinian Authority to seek U.N. recognition of a Palestinian state. Peace is hard work. Peace will not come through statements and resolutions at the United Nations. If it were that easy, it would have been accomplished by now. Ultimately, it is the Israelis and the Palestinians who must live side by side. Ultimately, it is the Israelis and the Palestinians, not us, who must reach agreement on the issues that divide them. And here's how the Prime Minister of Israel scored President Obama's handling of the Palestinian attempt to secure UN-sanctioned statehood. I think that standing your ground, taking this position of principle, which is also, I think, the, the right position to achieve peace, I think this is, a, this is a badge of honor. And I want to thank you for wearing that badge of honor and also I, to express my hope that others will follow your example, Mr. President. The leading Republican presidential candidates disagreed with the Prime Minister of Israel on how the president handled Israel. The Obama policy of moral equivalency, which gives equal standing to the grievances of Israelis and Palestinians, and including the orchestrators of terrorism, is a very dangerous insult. The president should not be negotiating for his ally, Israel. The president should stand behind Israel. In part, the president's failure to stand by Israel at a time of need over the last couple of years uh, has been very unfortunate for that part of the world. So, despite the president's handling of the Palestinian situation receiving gushing praise from Israel's prime minister, whose opinion appears to matter most in the Republican mind. It was somehow not good enough for the Republican presidential candidates. Such attacks seem misplaced, considering that the president's support for the security of Israel's borders has been consistent with his Republican predecessor, and that he's demonstrated considerable talent in matters of foreign policy through leading successful missions to topple Libyan dictator Muammar Gaddafi and capture and kill Osama bin Laden, all without the loss of one American soldier's life or inciting a mass anti-American uprising among people in the region. This president, though, cannot catch a break on matters outside the U.S.'s border.